Hello, baby. Welcome to the Smart People Podcast. Sit back, grab a drink, tune in your brain. Ask not what your country can do for you. This nation will rise up. Hello, welcome to Smart People Podcast. I am Christopher Stemp. And I'm John Rojas. And this is a special edition of Smart People Podcast because this is the middle of the week. And we are going to try to be better at um, releasing these episodes only around Saturday, Sunday, depending on when iTunes wants to put them up. But we kind of wanted to lighten lighten the mood in the middle of the week. Work's a grind. And so uh, Roach found somebody that he wanted to share with everyone and help with that mood enhancement. Yeah, and as I've mentioned before, I'm a huge fan of radio, podcasts, and comedy. And I reached out to Jamie Flam through Facebook and was pretty surprised when he responded and was you know up for doing the podcast. Uh, so I gave him a call and we had a wonderful discussion about comedy, podcasting, and other things that you will soon hear. Well, who is this Jamie Flam character? Jamie is a comedian out in L.A. He writes, he produces comedy videos, he's on the Long Shot podcast, just an overall wonderful human being. A good guy. (laughs) Just a few housekeeping things before we get to the interview. I wanted to remind you that we do have an Amazon search feature on the site. At the bottom of the site, you'll see an Amazon search box as well as a link to Amazon. Anytime that you buy any products from Amazon, go through our site, click on that link. It's just the same as if you went directly to the site. It's free. It's free, and it helps us out immensely. It helps us support uh, keeping this podcast up. And the the website, again, is smartpeoplepodcast.com. We're slowly but surely adding things to it. We're adding videos. We're going to do a discussion board. We want to hear your comments. So check us out. We're going to be putting up interesting links and turning it more into a website you can kind of frequent on a daily basis. For today's podcast, we've actually decided to introduce a new segment that Chris had mentioned a couple times, which is the listener segment. Uh, Today we have Casey Antonarella from Arlington, Virginia, and she's going to speak to us a little bit about happiness and her blog. Yeah, we figured happiness was a good way to start this off, being you know a comedian and this being a lighthearted um, podcast. So I think you know you'll find it interesting and cheerful. So uh, here's Jamie. Uh, today on the podcast, we welcome Jamie Flam, who is from the Long Shot Podcast, and you can find them at thelongshotpodcast.com. dot com. Jamie, how you doing? I'm great. How are you guys? Fantastic. Hanging in there. Nice. So I guess to start off this interview, I just I wanted to talk to you about how how you got into comedy, when you knew you wanted to do it. I mean, were you always doing funny stuff as a kid or was it later in life? Yeah, I, I, um, I started making comedy videos um, when I was in like elementary school and junior high. And um, I always had fun with that. And then, but I always regretted that no one told me, hey, keep doing this and you can do it for a living. So finally, um, after college, um, you know, I was always interested in comedy. You know, grew up watching Saturday Night Live and The Simpsons and um, all that kind of stuff. Then I started getting into Mr. Show and all that right after college. And actually, a friend of mine got onto the show Saturday Night Live. And I was like, dude, if this guy can get on, and I'm not going to mention his name, but I'm. Um, <laughs> And it's not to discredit his humor. He's a very funny guy. I was like, if this guy can get on Saturday Night Live, then maybe I can make a career out of this. And um, I think it was 2001. Uh, me and my friend just started uh, writing sketches. And I was living in San Francisco at the time. We started doing these multimedia sketch comedy video shows. And that was about it. You know, like it was right before the video kind of YouTube thing really took off. So at that point, it was kind of novel and cool that we were doing videos because I watch some of those videos now and they're god awful. <laughs> but back then just the novelty of the fact that we were, you know, using Final Cut Pro and making these videos was was really cool. So then I think it was about 2004, 2005, I was like, all right, 
time to move back to LA and really pursue this and moved back. My first uh, major job was running a comedy theater and really it's been, that's, uh, it's been all going since then. It's been a, it's been a fun ride. I guess you've done stand up, you've written for videos, you've done sketch comedy. What, what's your favorite, favorite form of comedy? Oh, that's an awesome question. Let me think. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, my favorite part about comedy is sitting in a room with one or two or however many people that you think are funny and just laughing while you come up with the most inane, ridiculous stuff in the world. But, you know, I've had with stand up, you know, I've done it so intermittently, like I've definitely had some fun nights, but just as many awful nights doing stand up. So I wouldn't say that right now, but I also enjoy, you know, producing shows and, you know, working with other comics. And I've really had, of course, a ton of fun doing this podcast. You know, it's like uh, another new kind of outlet for, for comedians and, and people to, uh, to have fun and get their comedy out there. Hey, Jamie, when you were, or I guess when you are doing um, stand-up, you ever worry about just absolutely bombing? Like, what do most comedians <laughs> think about, you know, if they go up there and just get killed? Because John and I were just actually out in L.A., I don't know, a week ago, and we went to the comedy store. Mm -hmm. And the first six comedians or so were really funny. And then it just literally turned awful. <laughs> well, I think a big part of it is once you've gotten past that six comedian mark, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think, uh, the audience is like, okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah, they hope they're drunk by then or something. <laughs> well, that's true too. By then people are drunk, but that, that can go either way. But yeah, I mean, I think every minute in preparing, every minute on stage is, for me, is in that fear mode which sometimes, you know, drives you to do funny stuff. And sometimes it just, you know, the audience can sense your lack of confidence um, at any given moment. You know, I've probably done stand-up over a hundred times. And, you know, there's been the nights when I've been a little drunk that's been fun or, <laughs> or you know, like, you know, just having fun and you, you get to know the audience. And, and, you know, I think that's part of like, I would say half my shows have been in front of an audience of mostly my friends, which is kind of an unfair way of gauging. <laughs> right. But yeah, I don't, I mean, from what I, you know, talking to all these comedians that are much, much more um, established than I am, you know, for most of them, you know, the fear never goes away. That just becomes part of it and you accept it and, and let it fuel you. Now, do you write by yourself or do you, like you said earlier, sit down with, with somebody to write? Because I know you probably do that with writing sketches and videos, but with stand up, I mean, do you flesh that out with, with people or do you just write it by yourself? Um, mostly by myself, although, you know, a couple of years ago, I started, I got a job working for a lady named Judy Carter. She wrote a book called The Comedy Bible, which, you know, if you, uh, if you decide to get into stand up, you know, at any age in any country, like that's probably the book you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Um, and so for, for the last couple of years, um, I actually no longer work for her, but I was booking all of her stand up classes. She teaches classes and, um, I would have never, ever in my life taken a stand up class, you know, like I think there's you know, such a stigma about it. But as I was working for her, she was like, yeah, why don't you take my class for free? So I was like, all right, there's nothing to lose. And I took it and it was actually really great. Um, not as much so for like learning the rules, although I think there are some great rules that you can learn. But um, in getting to really flesh out ideas with other people and just like sketch or video or whatever else, like, you know, sitting in with with other people that you think are funny and and watching ideas, you know, evolve and, and, and grow. It's it's the funniest you know, and just laughing. That's the, the most fun part of it. I guess to uh, to build on that sitting in a room with a bunch of people, the uh, mm -hmm. the Long Shot Podcast, how did you get involved uh, with all those guys? Well, I actually, um, I've known Eddie for probably about four years now. We, we met each other when I was managing uh, this comedy theater in Santa Monica, and he would perform there all the time. And then when I started doing more videos professionally, um, you know, he's such a funny and easy to work with guy. So we did a bunch of videos together. And um, I guess it was just over a year ago, um, we were just getting, we were getting paninis at our favorite panini garden. Um, and Sean would be cringing right now if he <laughs> <laughs> heard me talk about the panini garden. But, um, and we were just going to kind of brainstorming ideas for new videos, new things that we could do. And um, the idea of doing a podcast popped up and um, we're like, all right, let's, let's start doing a podcast and see where it goes. And then a couple of weeks later, he said that, he was actually also talking to Sean uh, Conroy, who was also interested in doing a podcast. And they they have a long history together. They've been working together for like 15 or 20 years. And so I was very open to bringing him on board and working with him. And then Sean worked with Amber in the sketch writing class that he taught and thought she would uh, be a great dynamic to bring. And she certainly is. So that's kind of how it all came together. 
Yeah, speaking of Amber, is she really that happy all the time? Yes. <laughs> it's it's amazing. <laughs> she really for the most part she is, you know, like like any comedian, I think, you know, there's there's the peaks and valleys, but um but yeah, she she definitely is always happy or and or caffeine laden, which helps. Yeah. So, I guess some of your other projects that you have, we we spoke on the uh, Immaculata for a second and you've got the <laughs> website immaculatized.com. Yeah, I can't uh, believe I got it. <laughs> I, no, I I figured that would have been gone. But why don't you go ahead and uh, and tell everybody exactly what the Immaculata is and okay. uh, what the website does. Sure. Um, well, the Immaculata, actually, it was a ridiculous word that I gave for, for lack of a better word, a cleanse that I did back in the year 2000, so over 10 years ago. Um, and I just graduated college and had worked my first job in San Francisco and was miserable. And I put on a ton of weight. And I was just like really depressed. And I was like, I'm leaving and I'm going to move to Spain. But then I realized I had no money. So I moved to Berkeley instead. Anyway, I'm making... <laughs> and I was like, all right, I got to get in shape. And I read this book called, I think, Eight Weeks to Optimum Health. And I was like, all right, for the next month, the next 30 days, I'm going to live immaculately. I'm going to call it Immaculata. And I'm going to cut out like all the sweets and caffeine and cigarettes and and marijuana, and um, what else? And booze? try to meditate. Did you, did you oh, of course, the... Oh, God. Yeah, booze was the big one. <laughs> um, and sure enough, after 30 days, you know, I'd lost some weight. I was feeling great. I got, like, a couple great jobs that I look back on fondly. And um, and really, that just kind of jump-started for what would be in the next three or four years, um, just more of a moderate lifestyle. And it's not to make any sort of judgment on drinking or any of the other stuff, but uh, for me, anyway, just you know, doing it more moderately was great. And then over the last few years, you know, you know, it started to kind of creep back up, you know, started doing all these things more, not to the point where I would say I'm like crazy alcoholic, or I'm like crazy pot guy or anything like that. But, but, you know, just to the point where, you know, shoot, I'm like in my mid 30s. Now, I'm miserable again. <laughs> and I got to make some changes. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna do Immaculata again. And it coincided, you know, right with um, the beginning of our second season of the podcast. And it started with just all right, I'm going to do a website. I'm going to do the same things I did 10 years ago. I'm going to cut out drinking and, and pot and, and sugar and what else? And caffeine and cigarettes was, I mean, that's, that's the biggest one. And so I did it for 30 days, you know, again, like, you know, lost some weight, felt so good. And then my friends over the, the course of my doing that became inspired, a lot of them, and they decided to do it themselves without me even asking. It was just like really cool. Like they're like, oh my God, let me get in on this. And they started seeing the effects as well started blogging about it, started talking about the podcast. And before I knew it, this past November, I had over 120 people from across the country, a lot of them like podcast fans that decided to do it for two weeks along with me. And um, so it's kind of grown into this cool thing that um, you know, I'm putting a lot of time and energy into. And right now I'm preparing for January. I'm trying to do my first 30 day one. And I think it's going to be, I mean, it's of course, in typical Jamie Flam, wait to the last minute fashion. You know, it's like two weeks before the end of the year, and I still haven't like made the big push, um, which is one of the big things I'm going to be working on in 2011 is being productive, getting things done. Um, so, long story short, um, I don't know where it's going to go, but you know, it's all about personal development and, and working on yourself to to really accomplish your goals. And you know, I'm sure you guys are creative people. You know, you hit roadblocks, and there's <clears throat> you know just issues with actually getting things done and actually making an idea come to life. And I think it all, you know, um, intersects with, you know, how you treat your body and your mind and that kind of stuff. So you know basically, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm, I may, it's really important. I'm no expert on this stuff. <laughs> I'm just kind of learning. I'm just doing it, taking my own kind of journey and putting it out there. But I'm not trying to claim like I know what's best for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But I, I think that everyone would agree cutting out some things is always good. It's funny because... I hadn't heard of the Immaculata until John told me about it. And we, you know, we're out in Scottsdale kind of just basically, you know, trying to be creative and doing our podcast and everything. And we're, we recently were like, you know what, we need to do something similar to this. So, you know, trying to cut out the sweets and everything. And I think it's impossible. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't see how it's realistic. This morning, I... we went, this morning we went to some diner and ate. Uh, pancakes with M and M's inside and Whoa. sausage dipped in waffle batter. So <laughs> this place sounds amazing. It's incredible. <laughs> well, if you can avoid that place, 
<laughs> might be off to a good start. But my, my first reaction is I beg to differ or I disagree. <laughs> Yeah. To quote Sean and I, yeah, it's really. I mean, that's part of what I'm trying to do. Is like, it's 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 difficult to do on your own this kind of stuff. But if you have a community of people um, that are also doing it, it makes it a lot easier and more fun. And and really, it's about getting past those first for me anyway. Those first like 10, 12 days. Once you get to that, and you actually start to feel how good it feels to not have M and M's in your pancakes, <laughs> like because that was the hardest thing for me was the you know Skittles and M and M's out, yeah. In my breakfast foods. <laughs> well, uh, all right. I've got two uh, two quick questions then for the Immaculata stuff. The first, you mentioned uh, meditation. Do you yeah. keep up with that? And the second question, do you find that you've been writing funnier stuff and been more creative while doing the Immaculata? As far as meditation, I wish I could say that I've been keeping up with it. When I first did the first Immaculata in September, I made it about two weeks with doing it every day for my goal was 20 minutes a day. And it was amazing. It was great. Since then, I kind of do what I like to call it, just like quick, like two second meditations throughout the day, which for me is just like, as soon as I notice that I'm in my head and my head is starting to like do the crazy things that my head does, which is judge and hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I take that step back and I'm like, all right, it's just my brain talking. And it's not true, true meditation, but um, it works for me. But that's one of my big goals for, for January is to get back on that, start doing that every day. And then what was the second part of the question? Uh, oh, writing letter. That's hard to say. That's another thing. Like, you know, like when I'm in the Immaculata, certainly like, um, you know, writing every day, if nothing else, just journaling and, and writing about what's going on in my life, which ultimately, you know, will turn into a lot of the good comedy stuff. But, you know, it's about focus and it's about having a routine and that's a big part of what I, my goals are for 2011, working on methods of productivity. Because I don't know if you guys are like me, but I have no um, lack of ideas. In fact, I like probably have 50 ideas a day that I either email to myself or I record into my voice recorder on my iPhone or I message to myself on my iPhone or I put into a, a Word document, any number of things. And so I've scattered in a million places all these ideas. Um, but so I'm trying to work on how do you you know, put those all in one place and actually have kind of a method to the madness of trying to be creative in this world and make a living. Yeah, when you figure that out, let us know too, because mm -hmm. uh, especially for this podcast, I've been wanting to do a podcast for the last, you know, two, three years. I've always been a big fan of radio and podcasting. And uh, finally, uh, Chris came up with the idea for the podcast. And he's like, hey, I want to do this. And I, you know, that was finally the thing that pushed me over the edge and was like, all right, cool. I can finally get on board and, and do this now. I do the same exact thing, you know, have a list of ideas in a Word document and they just sit there. <laughs> well, you did it though. Yeah. It's, Kudos it's to true. you guys. <laughs> to you. I mean, that is, I mean, it's so cliche, but just doing it and is, and forgetting about the rest, let everything kind of fall into place, but taking the first step. So high fives all around. <laughs> you know, I, I really appreciate all the, uh, all the time that you've given us for this and I just wanted to see if you wanted to plug anything and you know, your website, the Immaculatized website, but if you wanted to point our listeners into any creative outlets that you have, feel free. I appreciate it. Um, well, definitely immaculatized.com. That's where most of my energy is going as well as of course, the longshotpodcast.com. Um, we just released our, our season finale with Paul Tompkins. Um, what else? And, you know, if you go to jamieflam.com, you know, it's kind of a mess and needs to get cleaned up, but you know, there's, links to lots of the old stuff I, I, I've worked on in the past. And um, I think, you know, between the three of those. Oh, and it's a site that I don't update anymore. But I really am fond of the idea, but it's called Stuff Psycho People Like. <laughs> and it's uh, kind of a take on the, it was called Stuff White People Like. Right. Um, which was, it's kind of an outdated <laughs> parody now, but I've never plugged it. So Stuff Psycho People Like dot com. Nice. And are you guys uh, definitely planning on doing a season three of the long shot? Um, yeah, I'd say it's uh, very, very likely. We'll take a little two or three week break and hopefully jump back in before the end of January. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jamie. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you guys. And good luck with uh, this podcast. I'm sure I'm going to get like 10 million hits for you guys. Yeah, it's definitely we'll going to happen. <laughs> All right, so that was Jamie Flam, really cool guy, fun to talk to. Um, as promised, we are now going to do our first listener segment, as John mentioned at the beginning, with Casey of Arlington, Virginia. Casey, you have the floor. Well, 
Um, I wrote in to your podcast because I happened upon it from some friends of mine who said it was interesting. So I took a listen. Um, I thought it was cool that kids my age um, were taking it upon themselves to sort of do what they wanted to do because they always thought it would be cool. So it interests me because it was something that I was kind of doing in my life and taking on this blog that um, I've always sort of wanted to write and always thought it was cool that people would blog. And so um, about a month ago, I started my own blog called Happiness is the Way because I try to write about things that make me happy or, you know, might, you know, make somebody have a better day if they read about my, you know, stupid adventures, usually in the kitchen, which sometimes turn out good, sometimes don't. But, you know, my blog sort of started as a place for me to post pictures because I got a um, new camera and, you know, I'm a very amateur photographer and thought it would be cool to like test things out and, and a place to post the pictures that I took. Um, it sort of evolved in the last couple weeks into sort of a folly of recipes and cooking and, you know, other random things that I, that I get into. So that's my blog. That's how it relates to your podcast. And um, if you guys have questions, go ahead. Well, I was wondering why you chose kind of cooking and things like that. Is that your source of happiness? Well, eating is my happiness. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sad to say, but it's true. And I'm, a, and I'm, I'm a historically awful person to be in the kitchen, even helping. I thought it would be kind of cool to sort of relate to the public in that way, because I don't, I think it cooking kind of intimidates a lot of people. I like to eat a lot. So that's where the happiness part came in. And the, the rest of it is just, you know, trying to relate to people that read it because it intimidates a lot of people like it did, you know, for me. So I try to say, you know, if you don't have this, you can use this. If you don't know what it means to cream butter, all that means is mix it with sugar. So I'm, I'm learning as I go and trying to share, um, you know, some knowledge with the people out there and hopefully, you know, whether that makes them happy or not, I'm not sure. Have you had any responses from random people? I mean, has anybody stumbled across um, a blog and said anything to you? Um, I think that there, there's no, no one completely random has commented. No one that I don't know personally um, or that someone I know knows personally, but there are random people from other, you know, I don't know if it's, you know, people that are on like the blog, the blogger site or whatever, but it seems as though I'm getting some random attention, which I don't exactly know how. So does the physical process of blogging make you happy too? As happy as eating hmm. um, or, or a little bit less? <laughs> well, there's other things that make me happy, like trying to make people laugh. And sometimes I'm the only one who thinks it's funny. You know, like you said about random people stumbling across your blog, I think this podcast is made me realize that if you create a good product that you believe in and you do something you enjoy, it's going to happen. I yeah, mean, people, people, are gonna, people are going to find it and going to appreciate it. So definitely, um, you know, keep going if it makes you happy and everything. I think it's awesome. Casey, thanks for uh, being with us today. Why don't you go ahead and tell the listeners where they can find out about your blog and about you? Um, the name of the blog is called Happiness is the Way, and you can find it by going to www.caseyshappiness.com blogspot.com all right Ta -da. well <laughs> thanks again for being on and uh we we hope that numerous people go check you out again we wanted to say thank you to casey for being our first guest on the listener segment if anyone wants to be on please go to smartpeoplepodcast.com there's a contact us link just fill in real quick why you want to talk to us what you want to talk about and have your voice heard to the thousands of people who download this podcast every day. So I wanted to take the time to personally thank you guys again for supporting the podcast. And just to remind you once more that you can continue to support the podcast by clicking the Amazon link at the bottom of our page at smartpeoplepodcast.com. We also have a donate button on there. And if, you, you know, if you're in the spirit of giving, please go ahead, donate some money, help us keep this up and running. As always, we wanted to thank The Outdoors for the music on the show. You can find them at OutdoorsMusic.com and on Twitter at The Outdoors Band. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Make sure you tune in this weekend. Our guest is a really smart guy from Cambridge who is doing research on the study of aging, and he believes that the first person to live to 1,000 is alive today. So tune in then. Thanks.
check it the f*** out. Great, now we have an explicit tag. Ked. on the feet.